Hello. Good morning. We're just going to wait a few minutes. Was that your cat? Yes, it was. Oh, One of them. <laughs> we were just talking about pets. So I have a dog somewhere in the background. And how many cats do you have today? Two? Two. Two cats. So you, there may there's be more by the noise of it all, but it's two. <laughs> There may be some uh, guest appearances this morning at the store. Guest time. galloping through the background. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Good morning. Good morning. I see some friendly names. Hi, Anna. Hi, Ellen. Good morning, Nicole. Feel free to say hi in the chat. We're just going to wait a few minutes for um, for everyone to get their cups of coffee and their tea. And I, it's, it's really rainy here. Um, Shay, why don't you tell everybody where you are in the world at the moment? I am in Brooklyn where it is also very soggy. Soggy in Brooklyn, soggy in just west of Boston. That's where I am. So it's a perfect day for story time. Yeah. My favorite kind of picture book reading weather. Good morning, everybody. Just wait in just a few minutes. Um, is that, what, Shay, I'm looking behind you. Is that, do you have a fish tank back there? No, that is a Ikea cabinet that I've turned Ooh. into a plant cabinet. Ooh, that's fun. <laughs> yeah. So fun. It, it looks a little like a spaceship, but it's just for plants. It does look a little like a spaceship, but it's very cool. I couldn't tell if you had some kind of cool, like, fish tank. It kind of looks like a fish tank from here or um, like one of those cool signs that like the neon sign. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll have to get you one of those neon signs that says hello opportunity on it. Yeah. That'd be cool, right? <laughs> a little marketing write-off maybe. Maybe we can get Lizzie to, <laughs> to get you a neon sign. Uh, good morning, everybody. Well, I guess we can get started. I'm um, so happy to have Shaylin McDaniel here today. She is the author of this really wonderful new picture book called Hello Opportunity. We're going to get to hear uh, the whole story today on the story time. My name is Casey Robinson. I am the events manager at the Silver Unicorn Bookstore in West Acton, Massachusetts. Uh, Shay was kind enough to send signed book plates. So we do have copies that are signed at the store and I want to show you, this is so cool. Um, they match, how cool is that? I'm going to put a link in the chat. We love a chatty, um, audience. So feel free to say hi in the chat at any time. And also, um, at any time, if you have questions, we'll have some I'm just gonna put the link to the book in the chat. We'll have some time afterwards um, to ask questions and we would love, oh, Anna says the chat is disabled. Okay, let me just, that's a bummer. You figure that out. I'm gonna blow my nose real quick. Okay. My do. feet are cold and my nose is protesting. Just a second. <laughs> yes, absolutely. No worries. No worries. Okay. Okay, um, I don't know why that would be. Thank you for telling me that, Anna. One second. Let me. Let's be a setting. Okay. Okay. Can um, Anna, can you try the chat now and see? Give us a little. Oh, there you are. I wondered if it was Anna Bernard. <laughs> Hi, Anna. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks, Anna, for that little um, technical snafu there. Now it's working. I'm very glad. Hey, yay. Now we can kind of see you, you uh, all of you. Um, that's wonderful. Okay, great. Um, okay, so let's get the story time on the road. This is such a good book. I want you to know that the first time I read it, I got teary. I got a little teary. So it's that kind of nonfiction book. It's that kind of story that has um, just the most wonderful illustrations um, by Cornelia Lee and the sweetest story. It's totally captivating. Um, I just wanted to ask you, Shay, if you don't mind, um, a little bit about how I'm always interested. And I know that our 
our store um, picture book enthusiasts are always interested to know how you come up with the ideas for the books. So I would love to know, you know, what piqued your interest? Were you always interested in space and in space exploration? Or how did you come across um, your idea for this lovely book? Yeah, so I have definitely always loved space. I just think it's fascinating, everything from black holes to galaxies to everything. Um, this specific book, it, you know, the rover was decommissioned what feels like 10 years ago, but was it? <laughs> um, and I am chronically online. So I was enjoying watching everybody just feeling their emotions about losing this robot that we've never actually met, but that everybody kind of latched on to. Mm -hmm. um, and I work in publishing. So that weekend, I was home just thinking like, oh, I should go into work on Monday and talk to one of the editors and be like, we should see if somebody could write a picture book for this. I think it'd be great. And before I got into work, eventually brain turned around to, I'm a person. I could, I could, hmm. <laughs> so I did, I wrote something and then didn't know what to do with it because being an author was not in my life plan at all. Um, so I sat on it for a while and then thankfully had some friends that I trust their opinion on books. Mm -hmm. um, so I took it to them. It was like, is this, is this stupid? Is this going to embarrass me if I show other people? And um, they loved it and had some really great constructive criticism that I worked on. And then from there, you know, got an agent, went on sub, got an editor through Page Street, and here we are. That's amazing. I mean, that's the dream, right? I mean, for, yeah. so I'm really interested. So you work in publishing, but being an author was not on your bucket list. No, at all. No. So interesting. No, but I figured if I ever wrote anything, it would be a novel and I don't have the patience or the uh, ability to drop my perfectionism for that. Hmm. Um, picture books were not on the radar at all because they're hard. Yes, um, very hard. They are too easily devalued by people who don't know what kind of work goes into it. Um, so it was, it wasn't ever even on the radar. Cause it was, no, I don't, I don't know how to do that. That's incredibly difficult. I can't do that. Um, <laughs> and here we are. So <laughs> and here we are. <laughs> now, did you have any, um, you know, given your professional role um, in publishing, did you have any idea who you wanted to illustrate it? Did you have any sense of the style? Did you talk about it with Page Street um, before Cornelia, Cornelia was asked to do the drawings? I'm curious about that. Because I had the background, I knew that the final pick was not going to be up to me. Mm -hmm. I knew that it would, if I were an author illustrator, that would be one thing. I would illustrate and write together. I can't, I physically can't do that. Um, so I knew I would be selling just the text and then it would be up to Page Street to pair me with an illustrator of their choice, depending on what they thought would be the best match, both in terms of style, but also like I'm a debut author. So they may want somebody who's more established or they may want somebody who's also newer so we can grow together. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. They did ask for basically comparison artists of not me saying I want this person and only this person but can you give us a feel for what you see in your head and I did see more of the it's a bedtime story so I wanted it to look like a bedtime story mm -hmm. um, I also do tend to drift more towards like the vintage you know time yeah. sort of look um, and they found oh. Cornelia and I was very happy <laughs> look at this like the palette is just perfect yeah yeah I mean, you'll get to it's, see. All. Don't worry, you'll get to see all of the pictures in a minute. I promise. I'll stop, stop asking questions in a minute. It's just we were just talking before we started. Um, Shay and I were talking about that pairing when a good when a when a picture book um, nails it with the tone and the words and the illustrations and everything comes together in that beautiful alchemy, and it just becomes something you can't put down and something you can't forget. And that's how I felt about this book. Um, so well done. Well done, Shay. Um, and this is your debut. I just wanted to find out how it feels. How does it feel to have it out in the world? Okay. Just kind of like, <laughs> here we are. I, I don't tend to get 
flustered over these sorts of things. I get flustered over weird things. Like I could, I physically could not be in the room when my parents read it for the first time. It's not going to happen. I had to leave. Um, but here it's just kind of like, oh, that's, that's cool. That, this is weird. That is my name on a book. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. And <laughs> Happy 2022. <laughs> love the spine. I mean, to have your name on the spine too. Like, look at this. That's so cool. Yeah. Look at that. I love it. Um, okay. Well, I think we should hear, hear your story. I think right. we should have a, a bedtime daytime reading of your story. I will um, turn my camera off. So Ellen and Nicole and Anna and all of you out there won't, won't um, need to see me, but, um, but then I'll pop back on and we can have, we can have more chat. And so if you, if you have questions, you know, while she's reading, feel free to pop them in the Q and A or the chat, and then, um, and then we'll get to have more conversation after. So. Grab a drink of water before I start. Yeah, absolutely. Yay. All right, cool. Here we go. And anybody saying the screen is too small, I can't see it. You should just buy it then, so you can see the full spread in person. That would that would work. <laughs> so this is Hello Opportunity, the story of our friend on Mars, by me, Shaylin McDaniel, and illustrated by Cornelia Lee. Let's see, there we go. A long time ago, humans looked up at the wide blue sky and said, we want to go there. So we did. Next, we looked up at the big white moon and said, we want to go there. So we did. Then we looked up farther, past the sky, past the moon, to a little red planet named Mars and said, we want to go there. But we still had work to do, and the little red planet was too far away, so we sent a friend instead. We made her putting her together piece by piece, nine eyes, three ears, one arm, six wheels, and metal skin all the way around. She was a good shape for a friend and an even better shape for an explorer. And that is our dear opportunity herself. We named our friend Opportunity, which means a good chance and feels like hope, and since we were friends, we gave her a nickname, Oppie. Oppie left Earth on a warm July evening, riding a rocket into the sky with a whoosh and a whoom. We watched until she was out of sight, hidden in the stars. There she is. It was a long trip. As Oppie's rockets traveled, Earth traveled too. Around the sun from summer to winter, the new year came, and with it, a new celebration. Oppie's rockets had made it to Mars. She landed with a bounce. One, two, three, four. We cheered, she rolled, we roared. Finally, Oppie's lander stopped, and she looked out for the first time. We whooped and hugged. Then she made her first phone call home. Hello, Opportunity. The Little Red Planet had many secrets to discover and mysteries to solve. Oppie's new home was dry and empty, but maybe it hadn't always been. Maybe, once upon a time, there had been water. Maybe there had been life. Oppie's job was to be a bold scientist, a brave adventurer, and a clever detective. Her special eyes were like a magnifying glass, searching for clues. She could look and see the Little Red Planet for what it was and what it had been, like a storybook told in tiny pieces. Here, little round pebbles that whispered of running water. There, layers left in the dirt from a long gone sea. Everywhere, new and exciting surprises. Up here, you see a little conversation between Earth and Opportunity. It says, set a new driving record today. 140 meters, 459.3 feet. Good job, Opportunity. Here, you see NASA and a picture of Opportunity herself that says hello from a top endurance crater. Oppie called home often and we were always happy to hear from her. Sometimes she sent selfies so we would know she was okay. Sometimes she sent photos of her new world that took our breath away.
It was long, hard work discovering the secrets of the Little Red Planet. Sometimes the trip was scary and even dangerous. The Little Red Planet was a long way away from a tow truck if Oppie got stuck or a repair shop if something broke. But she kept going and we helped when we could. Have dug into soft dune material impeding further progress. Try rolling backwards. Oppie was supposed to stay on the Little Red Planet for three months. Instead, she stayed for 15 years. We kept in touch the entire time, watching our friend as she traveled the planet's surface. But then, a storm came. The storm covered Oppie in darkness and dust. The sun couldn't reach her batteries, and her energy drained. My battery is low, and it's getting dark. It was time to say goodbye. We sent her one last message, a love song, a lullaby, a kiss from her friends on earth. Our friend is gone, but not lost. She still sleeps on the little red planet, under the dust, under the stars. One day, the little red planet won't seem so far. We humans will follow our hope. We will visit the little red planet for the first time. We will wake our friend. Hello, Opportunity. The end. Still gets me. <laughs> it tends to for adults. Children really like it. And adults are in the uh, back. Like it's where the red fern grows. <laughs> yeah, that's it was the same spot too, Shay. It's the last time that spread you know what I'm talking about uh -huh, uh -huh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I actually the first time I read this I'll be interested to hear from our our audience if they um, read it um, prior to this but the first time I read it I, I got to that this page Shay my battery is low and it's getting dark that's what Oppie says and I said oh no <laughs> out loud to myself <laughs> oh no <laughs> I almost didn't want to turn the page yeah you know oh so good thank you so much for reading that did you um did anything about the writing process for this story uh surprise you I don't think so I was a little not surprised but kind of annoyed <laughs> at how hard it was to figure out what should go on like where the breaks should be on the spreads because you know you write and you might see full images for every single line it's like you, you can't have a line per page and you also can't have full sweeping spreads for every single thing you do have to do spot art and you have to break it up a little bit um Thankfully, that wasn't my issue to solve. That was Cornelia's magic touch in there, figuring out what goes where and my editor. Um, but that was harder than I expected it to be. And I was annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have the, so there's some lovely back matter too. Um, yeah. Let me just show. There's back matter in the back, but there's also a QR code on the copyright page that'll give you even more information because Ooh. I am a nerd and I have a lot of things I want people to know about. <laughs> oh yeah, look at that. I didn't notice that the first time. Yeah. You can see that right there. That's cool. I have I don't know that I've seen that before. Again, it's I'm really nerdy and I had a lot of things that I couldn't fit in here. Um, and picture books have to be a very specific length because of the way the pages right. are bound. So it wasn't like, be like, let's just add another page. It's fine. <laughs> I love that. I mean, I think that's one of the most delicious parts about nonfiction is the picture books in particular. It's such a, such a window of, of, um, of interest, a window of interest into you know, a deeper dive into a subject. So, and I know, you know, teachers use a lot of nonfiction picture books, even for older kids as a, as a way to, um, to introduce a topic or to introduce an idea in a really accessible way. So I love, love back matter. 
Um, so I'm really excited about that QR code. That's really cool. I haven't seen that before. Um, do you think you're going to write more books, Shay? I'm interested. Yeah. Yeah? yeah, I have one on submission now, so we'll see how it does, where it lands, if it lands. <laughs> yeah. Are you um, trying uh, fiction in addition to nonfiction, or are you going to stick with nonfiction? I do whatever my brain decides to latch on to. Mm -hmm. um, I, yeah, I have to do whatever my brain will not shut up about for like a solid three weeks, and then I go, okay, fine, fine, we'll put it down. <laughs> and so far, that's been nonfiction. That's cool. I wanted to ask too, I know lots of kids who watch these um, story time videos like to know where um, ideas come from. And I know you talked a little bit about, about the, the root of the idea for this, but do you have any other um, recommendations for kids who are interested in writing picture books or writing stories as to where? Yeah. I mean, that idea? if you want to write, you should be reading a lot. Um, any reading counts. Uh, it helps to read the kinds of things that you want to write so that you can see how people do it. And you can pick apart what you like and what you don't like. And why don't you like that? Why does that work for you? Um, but you don't have to read only the things that you want to write. If you read a bunch of other things, whether it's by yourself or with somebody else, you'll get to pick up little pieces and parts that you like and see how it works in the thing that you like to write. Um, but you should also try to write some too. And, and again, any kind of writing counts. You can write in your diary or you can write fanfic or you can write papers for class. You're figuring mm -hmm. out how you like to use your words and how you like to fit them together. Cause they're like Legos, you can build anything with them but you have to figure out how you like them to click together. So the mm -hmm. more you do that, the more you'll figure out how you like to write. And then it gets really fun. I like that analogy, the Lego analogy. Oh, we have a great question from Anna. If you had the opportunity to go to space, not in an egomaniac billionaire kind of way, uh, <laughs> would you go? Would you go? First of all, I appreciate the caveat. I'm never <laughs> going with Tesla. <laughs> I don't like to die. So I'm going to stick with the people that know what they're doing. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would be, I, I would, I would be happy to go literally anywhere. Um, I don't want to stay in space. But I would like to visit. I tend to treat space a lot like how people treat New York. Like, I don't want to live there. I just want to go. <laughs> um, I do get motion sick. So I'm a little worried about the G-forces. But I figure it's a, I, I can shoulder the cost of being a little sick to my stomach. And yeah. I'd go to the moon. The moon would probably be easier than Mars because Mars is still incredibly far. And we haven't figured out how to go fast enough to get there in a way that it's not gone forever and ever. Um, but yeah, no, NASA hooked me up. I'm happy to go any point, any time. <laughs> I mean, part of your press tour, maybe we could just figure this out. Yeah, yeah just give me a couple of days to line up a cat sitter and we'll be good. <laughs> um, anyone else who has questions, you can throw them in the chat or in the Q&A um, button, which seems to be working, thankfully. Um, did you have... Um, did you have sketches from Cornelio when they were working on the art or did you sort of see everything when it was all together? How involved were you in that process? So I didn't get to see, I got to see when they first reached out to Cornelia, they asked her to draw Oppie just to see if she could do a proper rover um, in the way that we needed it to be done. I was really firm uh, there were a lot of things I, I didn't bother to stick my ground on because it really doesn't matter in the long term. Uh, mm -hmm. One thing I was very strict about is this is a rover. This is a robot. This is a real thing. Don't give it googly eyes. Don't give mm -hmm. it eyebrows. This is, it needs to look real and you need to figure out a way to convey the emotion you need to convey without car making it a cartoon. Um, even if you look at something like, uh, like Wally. Right. It retains a rigid structure and you get the emotion through the eyes moving, but it, it remains like a real physical solid piece of metal. Um, with Oppie, even the eyes can't move like that. So you have to figure out a way around that. Um, so she yeah. sent through an image of, yeah. Just, it's so good. I'm showing everybody this. <laughs> I mean, so it's so interesting not to, not to interrupt you, but the, um, like the way this perspective right? The sort of just 
like off to the side, slight, slight profile perspective gives it so much emotion mm -hmm. without doing what you were saying over uh, an over caricature of the, of the robot. Yeah. Yeah. So um, she sent through her first sketch of Avi and everybody went, okay, that's good. That, great. You got the job. Um, but then from there, the next thing I saw from her was a full first draft of the book. Like as they were trying to figure out, well, this is where we put the text in all that kind of stuff. And that was my chance to jump in and be like, hey, I don't, I don't think this is the way to go. Can we attempt this? Or this is great. Don't touch it. Don't, 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 don't touch it. It's perfect. Or have we considered moving things around this way? Or that's not entirely accurate. Can we look at changing that? That sort of thing. Um, but that's all communicated through the editor. So I write to the editor who talks to Cornelia or Cornelia sends things to the editor who sends it to me. Right. So did you, have you talked to Cornelia since the book has been finished? We're mutuals on Instagram. So like we tag each other in things uh, connected to the book. Uh, we've never met. We've never like sat down and had a conversation, but like I try to make sure she's looped in on everything and she has so many projects going on because people have started to just like, oh, she's really good. Yeah, <laughs> she's talented. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. I know that's one of the things I think people don't always know about picture book, the picture book process is that usually the author and the illustrator, if they're two different people, don't communicate, don't yeah, talk unless to they're other. married or something. <laughs> right. Or Mac Barnett and John Klassen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Longtime friends. Um, there's another great question. Nicole uh, wants to know if there are any other robots or missions from NASA that you um, love or that you're excited about. I mean, I like all of them. I think they're all really cool. I like whether it's a rover, whether it's the probes, like the probe they just sent to smash into the asteroid this last week was really cool. The fact that Perseverance has its own pet rock now, like legitimate, is really exciting. Um, I don't know if any will be something that I will write about in the future, because again, it kind of depends on the mood of my brain and not me sitting down and going, we need another book about the golden record inside Voyager. I must do this. I, <laughs> if it comes, it comes. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But I still get the fangirl about all of them in the background anyways. Like the James Webb telescope. Yes. Will I write a book about it? We'll see. Uh, those pictures. They're so pretty. They're amazing. <laughs> They're amazing. If, if any of you out there watching this um, are not connected to the Instagram, <laughs> it might be worth joining Instagram just to see yeah. those face pictures from. They're on Instagram. Yeah. They're on Twitter. Like, yeah, NASA. poison and go for it. It's worth it. Yeah, <laughs> spectacular. Just a whole, yeah, a whole nother realm of vision, I guess. Um, I wanted to ask you too. So do you see... Um, I wanted to ask you about the influence of being part of the publishing world um, in your other job uh, um, when you're not being an author. Does that, has it had, like, how has it impacted you as, a, as an author? How has it influenced or um, like, like, where's the, you know, the Venn diagram? Where, where does everything cross over um, for you? So... In my day job, I am a marketer and I work on kids' books. I work on, in the past at another company that I worked at, it was very evenly split across picture books and middle grade with some YA. And now I work for a company that does mostly middle grade and YA, but is starting to do picture books, which is a ton of fun because we're back in my wheelhouse. Um, and I actually had somebody from my job a couple weeks ago ask like, has this changed how you work with authors? Because I do a lot of, I do online like social media marketing, but also title marketing, talking directly with the authors and the illustrators and doing whatever needs to be done. And this is going to sound arrogant. It hasn't changed it at all because I was already really good at my job. Mm. Um, yeah. I like to think through, well, if this were me, what would I want? What would I need from a marketer and do that? So I was already doing that. <laughs> And I hope it has helped the people that I work with. But also, I think the one thing that it has not changed my view in, but has just reinforced is 
I am very fortunate with Page Street in that I was already personal friends with my director of marketing and publicity. So I trusted her personally. I trusted her professionally. Mm -hmm. And I knew that I could ask her anything that I needed. She wouldn't take offense. She wouldn't be bothered. And that's what I want the people that I work with to do with me. Um, But because we don't already have that personal connection, I just have to be really explicit about it. About, no, 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 it's fine. Don't (laughs) apologize for emailing me. That's why you have my email. (laughs) It's fine. We're going to talk through this. We're going to set you up with whatever you need. Um, Not to genderize it, but I get to be kind of like the mom friend. And it's also my wheelhouse. (laughs) (laughs) That's so cool. It's just such an, it's such a, it's so cool to have both, you know, uh, like a 360 degree view of the process and um, the expectations. And that's awesome that you had that relationship prior, because I'm sure that was probably even more fun, actually, you know, to have had that, that relationship and that trust in place already. Yeah. And Um, I mean, with any process, there are always little hiccups here and there. And so I never really had to worry about them all so much because- even if I was stressed out in the moment, I could text her, be like, mm-hmm. what's up? What's going on? What is this? And I knew that she was telling me the truth, telling me what she knew and wasn't trying to spin it to keep me from worrying or anything like that. She, she knew I was an adult who could handle news professionally. It's like, okay, cool. Thanks. Glad to know. Talk to you on Monday. Bye. <laughs> I think it's so great. I, I think one of the reasons that this book is, um, is so good. Uh, and I think this is especially true with nonfiction. Um, when the author is so passionate about the topic and excited about, about the story and about the content and about all of the pieces that go into, especially nonfiction picture books, I think it kind of embeds like an energy and a joy into the story. And I think kids are really smart and they feel it and they pick up on it and you can't really fake that, you know? So it's, you know, it does not surprise me that you like geek out over um, all the facts and we have a little QR code for even more facts and that you love space because it really comes through in the feeling of the book, even, even not knowing that until now about you, but it does, it really comes through. And I think, you know, I think kids are going to feel that too when they read this. I mean, I hope so. I mean, that was another thing that I really dug my heels in on is there are some fantastic picture books out there that are full of facts and figures and really get into the nitty gritty of the details. And that's not what I wanted to write. I wanted this to be a story so that whether you are already into space or whether this is a new thing for you because you're three and this is the first time you are hearing about a thing called a rover or a planet Mm -hmm. called Mars, we're going to talk about it and we're going to learn about it and we're going to be super excited. We might be a little mad that we haven't actually been to Mars yet, but that's great. (laughs) And then from there, if you want to learn more, those books with all the really great numbers and distances Mm -hmm. that don't really make sense out of context and like all the names you haven't heard before, those are there. So we're going to go there next. First, we're going to talk about why we should be excited in the first place. And then we're going to get excited and we're going to go and we're going to read more. I feel like I would like to take a class with you. Will you teach a class? (laughs) Right? Everyone else is nodding their heads. I just know it. I just know it. You do. You have like a teacher vibe, like an excited, (laughs) like I would like to sit crisscross applesauce on the rug and have you talk to me about space, you know? (laughs) after we read this. I don't know that I'm so much a teacher is that one friend with the hyper fixation that won't (laughs) shut up about the one thing. And I'm going to keep talking until you're excited about it too. Let's go. (laughs) Um, well, I think this has been spectacular. It is a, a total bright spot in my otherwise very soggy gray day. Um, And I just want to say thank you, Shaylin McDaniel for being here and for writing this wonderful story. Hello, opportunity. Um, and thank you for everyone who's, who's joining us today and everyone who watches this video on our YouTube channel later. And, um, we have copies at the silver unicorn. I put the link in the chat for anybody they're signed. Um, so please stop by. We'd love to see you. Um, or you can order online. We're happy to ship also, but, um, 
Thank you so much, Shay. I'm I'm really looking forward to the, you know, to hearing news of your next deal and your next book. And maybe we can have you back at the store. Again, we'd love to love to support you. Thank you so much for having me. And yeah, I've never been to Massachusetts. So it's a exotic foreign land that I really want to get to. Someday. Well, I mean, Massachusetts first, Mars next, right? So there you go. Stepping stones. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Enjoy your day. Take care.